Here we have a word problem dealing with uh, the slope of a line. It says that we have a candle with a starting length of 10 inches and 30 minutes after lighting it, the length is 7 inches. So we're supposed to determine the rate of change in the length of the candle as it burns and then how long it takes the candle to burn to nothing. So over here you'll see that we already have a graph sort of showing what happens to the candle over time. At 0 minutes, so 0 on the x-axis right here, we have 10 inches length on the candle. So it's 10 inches long when there hasn't been any burning going on at all. Then after the candle is burned for 30 minutes, 30 on the x-axis, the candle shrinks down to 7 inches, so 7 inches length on the y-axis. And as we go on, you could see that after 40 minutes, we would predict it to be down to 6 inches, and after 50 minutes, down to 5 inches, and so on. So the slope of our line, then, is rise over run, rise over run, and we can pick any two points here on the graph. Let's say this one and this one. We rise, 1, 2, 3, so our rise is 3, and our run is from 30 back to 0, so our run is negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. So we have a run of negative 30. We reduce that, 3 goes into 30, and we get 1 over negative 10, or if you like, um, we could say that m equals negative 0.1 negative one-tenth. Either way is fine. So there's our slope. There's our rate of change. It changes a tenth of an inch every minute, or it changes, I'm sorry, one inch every ten minutes. So then if we're trying to find out how long it takes the candle to burn to nothing, we can take a look actually at our graph. What we're looking for is the x-intercept. We're looking for what happens to x when y, the length of the candle, goes to zero. In order for the length of the candle to be zero, it has to burn, according to our graph, for 100 minutes. So after 100 minutes, the candle is gone. The candle, whoops, candle, wow, spelling not my strong point. <laughs> the candle is gone. The fish population in a certain lake increased from 370 to 420 over the months of March and April. At what rate is the population increasing? Now this one's a little interesting because we don't actually have two points to deal with. What we do have is a change. We have a change from 370 to 420, and then we have a change in time from March to April, or using the months of March and April. So what we have is a change in population, population change, wow, change. Hey, look at that. You can read it that time. Population change of 370 to 420, so 50. And then a time change. Time change of two months. So if we say the population change is on the y-axis, if we were to just sort of imagine this thing as being on a graph, if we were to say the population change went this way, and time went this way, then our, our vertical change, our change in y, is the 50. So we'd have 50 as our change in y, or our rise, and 2 months, or 2, as our change in x, or our run. So to find m, we'd simply simplify this fraction, 50 over 2, and we get an m of 25, which tells us that the population of fish d are increasing at 25 fish per month.